Warning. The following podcast episode contains major spoilers for Witch Hunter. So do not listen if you have not listened to Witch Hunter. Hello, this is Domine with another episode of the Audio Epics podcast. What, already? Yes, I know, usually. <laughs> in the past, there's been a bit more time between each episode, but, um, you know, we're trying to ramp it up. Over the past few months, as Witch Hunter has sort of made its way onto YouTube, um, we've actually received quite a few questions from listeners about Witch Hunter in particular. And, um, you know, we got some questions by mail, uh, on YouTube, in YouTube comments, and various ways. And I thought it would be nice to have a little episode uh, where we answer some of those questions. So um, I've written them down, and I've got the answers right here. First question. Why does Ludlov admire Samina so much for her magical abilities? Surely he must have seen more spectacular things in his career than a light and heat and freezing spells that almost drain her entirely. Very good question, actually. Um, the answer is because he senses that Samina's magic is essentially different from the sorts of magic he has seen before. It comes from another source than that of the necromancers and witches that, um, that Ludlov has encountered before. It returns to the core of the goddess. It's based on the ancient arcanic language. And so it's not really the kind of magic where you gain power by, you know, making certain sacrifices or anything like that. It is pure, um, it's a gift from the goddess herself. It's an ability, an innate ability um, expressed through language, which is um, the goddess's preferred um, channel, let's just say. Second question. Why does Hoskiv suddenly get a change of heart at the end? Well, um, the way I see it, Lady Hoskiv is not a hypocritical character. Before Ludlov's capture, she really believes that killing all magicians is the only way to preserve the sacred stones. Anyway, Ludlov's claim that the stones are actually evil astonishes her, and at first she refuses to believe it. But when she actually witnesses the stones being taken into the abyss and then a demonic army arriving soon after, that plants the first real seed of doubt in her mind. And then later on during the siege, uh, with, in, during the incident with the Lady of the Orphanage, that really prods her to rethink her whole take on the subject. Plus, keep in mind that she's also aware of Ludlov's theories, um, and she has tolerated them, if barely so, for a long time. Third question. This is a question we got in a YouTube comment. I'll just read it out. How do you live a life in service to others and get to heaven and think you won't get in? Then again, I guess that is the type of person who would live such a life. Um, another user actually answered this question on YouTube and said, Ludlov lived a life of violence. Honestly, no matter the motives, violence and murder are all bad, no matter the viewpoints. It's easy to see his apprehension about being allowed to go to heaven. And I have to say, that's exactly how I see it as well. While Ludlov's views differ from most people during his time, uh, Ludlov is a deeply religious person, and while he is driven by revenge throughout most of the story, by the time he arrives at death's door, he realizes how wrong it was to spend so much of his energy on revenge when he should have, um, you know, served his goddess more. Fourth question. Is magic and arcanic the same thing? Well, um, the way I see it, in the world of Witch Hunter, the word magic is used to describe anything a person does that transcends the laws of physics. And there are definitely lots of bad forms of magic in the Witch Hunter world, some of which have demonic origins, and those have got nothing to do 
Um, the ones that are purely demonic in origin have got nothing to do with, um, with the Archaic language. Archaic is the language of the goddess, which she used to create the world. She literally spoke the world into being. And um, the, the lore is that she shared some of that language with Wolfen, uh, who passed it on to his followers. All of that um, you can hear in the last episode of the Witch Hunter audiobook, um, The World of Seven Peaks episode. Over many generations, some evil magicians that, who, ha, who already had power that came from other sources, uh, they came to twist and abuse this holy language and they started to mix it up with evil forms of magic and basically corrupting the language of the goddess itself, which is the worst form of blasphemy possible in, uh, in, in this world. And this has caused the fear of all magic, including Arcanic, in Seven Peaks. But in its original, uncorrupted form, Arcanic is actually a sacred gift. It was simply spoiled by mankind. Fifth question. A lot of people have asked, is this story set in the world of Warhammer Fantasy? No, it isn't. While it is partly inspired by Warhammer Fantasy, it is definitely set in its own universe with some key differences. Other people have noted similarities with Solomon Cain, with the, um, the Witcher series, with uh, the Dragon Age series. Um, none of those things were actually an influence. Uh, Warhammer was an influence. Uh, I only learned about uh, the existence of Solomon Cain when I was already writing Witch Hunter. So um, I, I had no idea that Solomon Cain even existed. I think actually Solomon Cain inspired um, Warhammer and then Warhammer inspired me. So I guess that's what... Then there's Van Helsing, um, the movie, you know, the 2004 movie. I guess, yeah, that movie did have some influence. Um, I don't think much of it, to be honest, of that movie, but... Um, I did like the whole look that um, that uh, Hugh Jackman had going on there, um, the, the the whole outfit, and you know there were some elef ele elephants, <laughs> there were some elements of that movie that that I thought were inspiring, um, and I guess I was sort of just disappointed that you know this could have been something really, really interesting and really good, and instead it was kind of a stupid movie, so um, that that was actually one of the things that made me want to do a a more serious, a more, um, I don't know, a, a more dignified story with a, that kind of protagonist. Sixth question. Someone asked, is Ludlov Jewish? Witch Hunter is of course set in a completely different fictional universe, so no, he's not Jewish. Nor is he meant to evoke Jewishness. Uh, in fact, nothing in this fictional world is meant as a comment on anything in the real world. It is pure fiction. Seventh question. Is Adomir's strange death supposed to set up a sequel? Who knows? I suppose that there was something ominous about the way he seemed to be quite happy to be killed. But um, yeah, who knows? Eighth question. Uh, this question was asked several times. Where are you from? And another question that was also asked <laughs> along with it was Witch Hunter originally written in another language? Uh, my wife and I are from the northern part of Belgium. Yes, that huge country, Belgium, uh, actually has is actually divided into nine provinces. Um, and it has a northern half and the southern half, and in the northern half we speak a completely different language than in the southern half. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and we speak Flemish, which is a kind of Dutch, I guess you could say. Um, a lot of the names in the story are German. Some are Slavic in origin, you know, uh, Polish, Russian. Uh, but the story was originally written in English. Um, the fact that some of the names are German is because... Um, the, Seven Peaks is meant to evoke, you know, a, a sort of German, Germany place. <laughs> and, um, 
And then there are also in, in the inf there's also a big influence from Barcelona, the neighboring country, which uh, which is supposed to be sort of our our Russiany place. But the story itself was actually written in English originally. Uh, another nice little detail, uh, I suppose, the character of Gustav Finsterdunkel uh, speaks with a Dutch accent. We encourage the, the voice actor, Aaron Bodanovic, to go for, for that accent, a Dutch accent, because in the novel it is stated that Gustav sounds like he's from Flatland. And I suppose that Flatland is our version of Holland. Ninth question. Will you do a Mass Effect story? For some reason, several people have asked us this. Will we do a Mass Effect story? Well, I really like the original Mass Effect trilogy, but um, I actually have no intention of treading on copyrighted grounds or even to play around in another writer's universe. So we won't do Mass Effect, um, nor will we do you know, any other kind of fan fiction or, um, or anything like that. Tenth question. Why don't you put the story online without these annoying little intros at the beginning of each episode? Yes, one person in particular um, thought I had to be killed um, for making these annoying little intros. So I apologize for that. But, um, but um, actually, we do have a version online without any annoying little intros. You can purchase the story on Bandcamp and on audiobooksontape.com. Both versions come with additional material such as the music, a map of Seven Peaks, a digital map, and lots of other illustrations. And of course you can also buy the novel itself, which you can find on Amazon, both as an ebook and as a regular book. One day we would hope to be able to do this professionally, so that we could, you know, work on audio stories all day long. But for now we still have to do it in our free time. And um what can I say? If you support us, you get cool stuff, plus you help us to reach that goal. Um, so, um, you know, if you hate the, the little intros in, in the YouTube version, um, you know, by all means, check out uh, Bandcamp. And this is completely optional, of course. You can just listen to our stories on YouTube and, uh, and be done with it. But we do really appreciate any support. Eleventh question. The next four questions were all sent by the same person. First one. Does the truth revealed mean magic will survive? Um, you know, at the end of Witch Hunter, uh, the arcanic language is not lost. At the very least, Tara still knows it, or some of it, and will be able to pass that on to her daughter, Espera. And there may be other survivors of the Magicide Act as well. And there may still be some books left with uh, the Arcanic language in them. And there may even be some other sources, some um, less worldly sources, to spread Arcanic. So Arcanic is not dead yet, and as long as Arcanic is not dead, uh, magic is not dead. Twelfth question. Will the church reform to the pre-sacred stone belief system? I love a question like this. I think what you would expect to happen is that a controversy breaks out and that people will be divided into different camps. Some will still believe that the stones were indeed sacred and that the demonic army that appeared and almost wiped out the city was the result of the mage's depletion of the sacred stones. And those people will still want to get rid of the last remaining mages. Others, maybe, will want to see the White Sickle to decide what they think of it. Uh, they will probably have heard of, of this miraculous uh, White Sickle appearing, and uh, they'll want to visit it, and, and then they may or may not be convinced uh, that Semina's sacrifice indeed meant the return of the Maiden's blood into the world. And those who are convinced, including Lady Hoskiv, will become part of the new church that unites the ancient beliefs pre Voronitz, with a belief in the White Sickle as the reinstated presence of the Maiden in the world. So um, they will become followers of, of Samina and of the White Sickle. Thirteenth question. What happens to the children of the Ghost Streets? I think this is a really great question, 
but I don't want to answer it just yet. I mean, the children of the ghost streets, indeed, they are leaderless, their leader is dead. Um, they became what they were because of magic, because of the, the curse of, 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 you know, corrupted magic. And um, they live now quite near to the place where, where Lucas rose, but also um, where he was defeated by the White Sickle. So what will happen to them? They will still have some power to play. That much is clear. But what exactly that will be, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Fourteenth question. Will the public's view on magic change in a more positive direction? Well, here too I think there will be a split. But there will be more people who are sympathetic to the arcanic form of magic than there were before. Especially, of course, with Lady Hoskiv openly showing her support as well. She is, for now, the sole ruler of Seven Peaks, so that does carry a lot of weight, as, as you can imagine. We'll see a gradual move towards the new church, um, which will also include a view closer to, to the way people viewed magic in the days of Wolfen. But I guess to really answer questions such as these, we would need a sequel. For now, though, um, what we're making is not a sequel, but The Beast of the Western Wilds, which is... I hesitate to use the word prequel because it's um, it's not really about the main plot of, of the, the story Witch Hunter. It's a separate story about Ludlove and... Um, and one of the cases, I guess, that he had to investigate as a witch hunter. I really enjoyed these questions, um, and so it would be lovely if we could do this again. <laughs> um, so please send us your questions, put them on YouTube, you can find our channel, Audio Epics, on YouTube. Um, just type in a comment with a question anywhere in any of our videos, or um, you can visit our website, audioepics.com, audio-epics.com and use the contact form to send us an email and that's a great way to send us your questions as well. Or on Facebook, we are on Facebook, Audio Epics. And, you know, the questions do not have to be about uh, Witch Hunter, they can be about the Will of the Woods or about the Fairy Tree, um, which I rarely mention on this podcast because it is not really an audio epics production because it was produced by the owl field but it was written by me and so i guess it is kind of a kind of an audio epics production in that sense so anyway send us your questions um could be about anything really as long as it is you know somewhat relevant and i look forward to uh, to answering them meanwhile i wish you all uh, great day or night whatever the case may be and uh, I'll talk to you again sometime soon and this is Domine signing off